Hi friends, um, this is Ree and welcome to Tea with Ree. I haven't done this in a while. I've been really busy. Um, the last couple weeks have kind of been a whirlwind. As you can see, I've got my messy craft table behind me. It's been moved and I have crafts there and a painting project going on on top of my crafts. So you can see that's kind of a mess. And I debated whether or doing this with the mess behind me, but sometimes life is a mess and you still need to do your things, you know, you still have to let life go on. So um, I wanted to do a reading for you guys today. And as always, these uh, messages are intended to be for whenever you find them, not necessarily for any certain week or month or day. Um, and I wanted to do it with this deck, the Angels and Ancestors Oracle Cards by Kyle, Kyle Gray. Um, this is a Hay House deck, and it's one of my favorite decks, although I haven't actually used it in a while because it's been upstairs, and I've been downstairs a lot, which is great because I'm feeling better. Um, but I've been doing too much sometimes and hurting myself, so I have to be careful. But um, actually, all the animals on the front are um, very important to me. You got an owl, a beautiful panther, a crow, and a little baby deer. So... Um, but anyway, let's get on with this. And I actually want to show you the stones first because I'm going to do four stones this time. And one of the stones is going to be a card from this Goddess Oracle. And this one is by Amy Sophia Marashinsky and illustrated by Prana Janto. I'm so sorry if I botched that. But I found this deck at a... Um, I saw somebody with it at a um, show and they were letting people pick cards out of it and read cards for themselves and I fell in love with it from that moment and I had to buy it, find it for myself. So um, anyway, so let me show you the stones. So we have this chakra cone that has got all the stones from the chakra. I think this stone is still in our website. I, pretty sure we still have some of those left. This is a moonstone pyramid. And then this is a selenite desert rose. And this is an aventurine pyramid known as a good luck stone or the gambler stone, but I like to refer to it as the good luck stone. Okay, so now I'm going to lower the camera so you can see my setup here, which is kind of funny looking but um, I can't really get out right now because um, I'm taking care of someone who has cancer so um, I can't really get out of the house much and I haven't I could buy a thing online or something and I haven't really done it yet so I found some felt that I had left over from the bow ties that I made for dogs and the shelters so um, Anyway, oh, you'll see what it looks like here. So, um, let's see if I can lower this camera enough. I got a new camera stand because someone keeps taking off with my camera stand. So I bought a new one so that person could have that one. So, um, let's see here. Okay. I think you'll be able to see that okay. All right, so you got the chakra cone, moonstone, desert rose, and green adventuring, okay? So choose your stone, or if you feel drawn to any particular spot that catches your eye, that might work too. So inside this box, it always has a, an intention. I set the intention that whatever is gained from the lessons learned from this tool, will be dedicated to the growth of all beings in all places. Amen, blessed be. So yes, that is very important. And this is the beautiful little picture on the top. The owl is very important to me. And clearly I have not used these cards enough because they are too stiff. many card decks. I like to give my heavenly guardians many ways to speak to me, although most of the time they don't need ways to do so. Okay. Now we're going
going to. And I did not know for sure which card, which stone was going to be the goddess card. And so this is um, the inside here of the kind of a flip open box. I did not know which stone they were going to pick for that. And the cover here is a black and white. This one is published by um, US Game Systems. And I did get that duck on Amazon as well. Okay, so let's start with the green adventuring. I want to make sure you can see all of these. It always looks like backwards on the camera, so when I move them, it's like I'm moving them wrong. Okay, I think I got it here. All right, so this one, Star Ancestor, follow the voice of your soul. Wow, that's beautiful. It's got the pyramids of Egypt on it. How many of you feel a connection to the stars? So that is Green Adventuring. Okay, this is the Goddess Oracle card is the Desert Rose Stone. Uranome Ecstasy. That's beautiful. And you see that this is actually a snake spirit and she has angel wings. Now, I've, I've said before about not being afraid of snake energy. And this is actually, um, I've talked about this before, but um, how Egyptians, their pharaohs had a cobra coming out their forehead. This had to do with the, um, oh, oh my goodness, I'm totally drawing a blank. Why am I drawing a blank? I'm, I've been so tired. Um, Kundalini energy. Okay, so um, the rainbow within ourselves, if we heal that energy within ourselves, the Kundalini energy comes out the top. Okay, so hopefully I can get through this without sounding too confusing. Are you leaving? Okay, one second, please. I love you. Be safe. Okay, I'm back. All right, so the Moonstone. Oh, Jesus. Okay, great teacher. Learn. Well, that was ironic. Okay, great teacher. Learn from spiritual experiences. We have the flower of life in the background and a dove. Okay. And for the chakra cone, we have the seer. See beyond the current situation. Most of the time I don't need the cards because I see so much in the environment and um, it's strange because in the beginning when I was doing readings for people I thought anybody could see what I saw and now I realize that's not true and I used to try to teach people what I saw and I, I was able to help a lot of people to see um, but now I realize that there's a lot that I see that not everyone sees, and maybe there's people that see things like I do, and I didn't know that there were people like that. Um, but I do think there are a lot of people that can see things the way I see them, and I think that they can be taught this as well. Okay, so let's start with the Angels and Ancestors cards. We're gonna start with Star Ancestor right here. Okay, follow the voice of your soul. Okay, the message. Heed the messages coming directly from your soul. The star ancestors is a Native American term for extraterrestrial, extraterrestrial light beings who are dedicated to the healing and growth of the world. These incredible beings are divine embodiments of love who bring wisdom from the higher realms. Often people feel a sense of connectedness 
when they look up into the night sky and see the stars. I believe that's because they are remembering their starry connections. And those are what this card represents. The star ancestor is reminding you that you have otherworldly support and that your friends from the stars can help you if you are willing to be helped. They can support you in connecting with and following your soul's deepest calling. The extended message is there is a deeper purpose to your human journey. Not only were you born on purpose, you were born for a purpose. You were born to be a bright light in the world and there are supporters out there in this universe sending waves of energy to guide you at this time. Information and inspiration that has been coming your way recently is not new information, but memories. Your feelings of being drawn in a particular direction are the awakening of an aspect of your soul. It's interesting because I see people who are similar in soul and it's like, and I've been calling it star avatars or um, soul avatars. You are being drawn toward a road that will not only light you, up, light you up, but also help you to light up your corner of the world. Continue following the cosmic guidance that is coming your way. Okay, so let's go to the great teacher. I'm going to have to sip a drink for a minute. Actually, so let's skip to the seer because I just happened to open to that page. So we'll do the seer first. See beyond the current situation. Look beyond your current situation, raise your vibration and focus on love. Most indigenous peoples have a seer in the family tr or tribe. Seers are the intellectual and intuitive beings who serve as direct channels for information on what's occurring now and what's about to unfold. Their energy isn't about predicting your future or for you, but about showing you how your intentions are creating it. That makes sense. A true seer will help you to see what your intentions can change, therefore, so you can change your future. The message of this card is to let you, is to let the clairvoyant within you rise up so that you can see the way forward yourself with your spiritual eyes. <laughs> That's interesting because um, when I would do readings for people, I would see where they have been, like the path that they've been walking. Um, and then I would see like a couple options ahead for them and how they can change their path or what... Um, how they are affecting the, the path ahead. Clairvoyance isn't just about predicting the future. This is the extended message. It's about being able to clearly see enough to create your best future. You are being encouraged by your ancestral guides and angels to see beyond what you think is happening now. It's like seeing the bigger picture from a higher perspective, like the sight of an eagle. Don't allow your ego or doubts to play games with you. Instead of seeing yourself as stuck or lost, know you're in an energetic holding space while the universe calibrates a path that is more favorable for you. Angels of light are upgrading your energy so your experiences can be more enjoyable. You are moving towards something extremely uplifting and enlightening, so stay calm and keep your eyes on the prize. Okay, and so let's go to the great teacher. I passed that, but we'll go back here. Okay. Okay. We are ready for the next great teacher to appear. Learn for learn from spiritual experiences. Know that what is happening around you is divinely inspired from your current experiences, then share them with others. This card is inspired by Jesus, who is one of the most widely acknowledged and loved spiritual teachers of all time. But there is a great teacher in every tradition. And this card represents the one whom you feel closest, as well as the great teacher within. 
The teacher wears simple clothes here to demonstrate that even if you live a simple life, it can be an incredibly spiritual one. He is surrounded by a sense of serenity and harmony because he has absolute trust in the higher power that moves through him. And the dove on the card represents receiving answers to prayers through signs and experiencing peace through joy. <coughs> I'm sorry, I'm more dry today because it's so dry in my house. Um, this card can represent, this is the extended message. This card can represent a teacher in your life or the great teacher within, as we are all connected to the divine. Either way, it shows that you have dedicated a lot of time, effort, and energy to understanding yourself and the world. You are having spiritual experiences at this time and gaining a greater awareness of what you need to do in order to grow. There is a great chance that if you've been having any challenges recently, you've surmounted them and allowed them to be vehicles to lessons that, that are helping your spiritual connection. If you feel that you've received messages from heaven or the universe recently, this card is confirming that these have been indeed holy experiences. You know, it's interesting because there have been, you know, things in my life that I thought at the time were um, just such a waste of my energy, right? And like I, um, at one time I managed a 10,000 square foot retail store that had all these different departments and I just felt like it was such a waste of my time. But there are parts of that experience that have helped me in different parts of my life today. So even if you're in a, in, you're a light worker and you're in a job that you hate right now, um, you know, keep working on moving forward, yes, but don't feel like the, the space that you're in right now is a complete waste of time because you, you don't know what you're learning that actually is a part of your journey. So have faith, but keep moving forward. Okay, so let's check out this goddess card. So we have this beautiful angel seems to be walking on water and flying through air at the same time with angel wings and she's kind of communing with a snake, kind of dancing with it almost it looks like. This says ecstasy. When I awakened and arose out of swirling seething chaos, seeing no other way to express the sheer delight the wild exhilaration, the explosion, uh, explosion of energy, I felt. I began to dance my exuberance, that feeling of floating on a sea of rapturous joy, lost and transported in the ecstasy, the intensity of ecstasy. It's pronounced urename, or wide wandering, is the Pelagian or pre-Hellenic peoples of Greece great goddess of all things. She divided the sky from the sea and while dancing on the waves, she created the north wind. The north wind grew lustful, so she seized him in her hands and formed a serpent she called Oph Ophion. Your enemy made love with Ophion and then assumed the form of a dove and lay the universal egg out of which all creation came. Ophion, not content with being a creation of, of your enemy and then co-creating with her, boasted, hold on, gotta change the page. Sounds like he was naughty, so let's find out. Boasted that he was the supreme creator. Well, of course, that sounds like a man sometimes. Sometimes, we don't wanna be too hard on the men. So your enemy knocked out his teeth and banished him. Well, okay, you go girl. Meaning of the card. Your enemy dances into your life to tell you that it's time for ecstasy. Ecstasy is here for you in all its fullness, exuberance, and rapture. How can you give yourself ecstasy, that deeply nourishing, intensely joyful place? One way is by healing the wounded parts of yourself. Yes, that is true. Your wounded parts take up emotional space within you. Once healed, the space they previously occupied becomes available for ecstasy. 
The more space within, the more room for ecstasy. Another road to ecstasy is to open to it, to give yourself permission to call it in, feel it, and revel in it. For those who have experienced little joy in our lives, the conscious decision to court, seduce, and entice ecstasy ensures it will, be, will come. Your enemy says that when you make a decision to dance with ecstasy, all life challenges you will all life challenges with the opportunities to facilitate that dance wait a second that, that did not come out right your enemy says that when you make the decision to dance with ecstasy all life challenges you with the uh, with the opportunities to facilitate that dance wow i'm very tired um but there is a ritual suggestion in this book so if you are interested in getting these cards, there's a ritual a ritual suggestion with each card. And since I can't talk very well today, I don't know if I should explain this or not. Um, well, I guess since this is the last card, you can choose if you want to continue listening to me or not. So um, the ritual selection is dance with your enemy. Find a time and place when and where you will not be interrupted. Sit or lie comfortably with your spine straight and close your eyes. Take a deep breath and release it slowly. Choose one part of your body to breathe deeply into and do so. Focus all your attention on that one part, then hold your breath and feel a small pulsing in that body part for a count of five. Slowly exhale and feel the sense Feel, sense, or see your body crumbling into dust while that chosen part is still intact. Okay, so I probably should have read that first. Okay, so let's try this again. We're going to focus all our intention, our, all our intention on that one part. Hold our breath, feel a small pulsing in that part of the body for a count of five. And then we're going to slowly exhale while we feel, sense, or see our body crumbling into dust while that chosen part is still intact. Now take a deep breath, and as you release it, let that body part crumble into dust. Visualize, sense, or feel the opening to a cave. It could be a cave you know or one you've imagined. Take a breath and as you release it, see yourself standing in front of that cave. Feel the interior, feel the exterior of the cave. Smell the mouth of the cave. Now enter the cave. It's the exact size and temperature it needs to be for you to feel comfortable. Now go to the back of the cave, which narrows into a descending tunnel and begin to go down, 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 deeper, 
deeper, deeper, down, 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 feeling more relaxed, more at ease, until you see light at the end of the tunnel. It's a faint, pale gray light, and you exit through it. You're now in the great primordial chaos. Nothing is differentiated, everything swirls and seethes, and you call out to your enemy. She appears next to you and invites you to dance ecstasy with her. Breathe deeply into your heart as you open to experience what needs to experience. Take another deep breath, filling your lungs with power and energy. Your enemy has begun her dance and the sight, feeling and sense of it fill you with intense joy, so much that you feel empowered and inspired to begin your dance. At this point, you may want to turn on some music or begin to dance, or you may continue this as a journey. You feel joy as you dance, the deliciousness of moving, so being so totally and completely in your body brings you pleasure. The pleasure grows the more you move, the more you express yourself through dance until you feel a vibrant energy hum in your heart. As the hum spreads to your entire body, your heart opens wide to ecstasy. You feel your cells explode. The feeling of dancing is exhilarating, rapturous, ecstatic. The boundaries of your body dissolve. Your very being expands until you feel a sense of union with everything there is. Everything there was. Everything there will be. You dance and the swirling, seething chaos separates into the sky and water. You dance on the waves in total joy and bliss. Keep on dancing, being filled with joy, delight, ecstasy. Keep dancing until you feel full and ready to return. Thank your enemy and return to the cave. Now you are coming up, up, up feeling completely refreshed, up, 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 feeling revitalized and transformed and vibrantly alive. You reach the cave and walk out through its mouth. Standing outside the cave, take a deep breath, and as you release it, come back to your body. Take another deep breath and open your eyes. Welcome back. Well, I hope that was, well, there we go. <laughs> I hope that was helpful to you. Um, so this has been a tea with Ree. This is my tea in a cup. <laughs> and anyway, have a blessed day. Take care.